Hello, it's Ricardo, and welcome back to Reboot and Restart. This is the series where I go back and revisit big key pieces and set pieces of Elite Dangerous and the progression towards Elite with the value of a little bit of hindsight. So this is a new account that I've been playing, and as you, if you've been watching the previous video where I've been going to get the Cirrus Corp permit, this is part two of me trying to attain that Cirrus Corp permit, and I found, soon found out it was all really going to be all about reputation. Reputation is key. As soon as you get reputation, you get the more meteor missions. You can then gain additional reputation. You rise through the ranks of the Cirrus Corporation quicker. And as soon as you get to Allied, Allied then what you're going to do then is you're going to have that lovely Cirrus permit. Now, we've been shipping an awful lot of things. We've been shipping uh, performance enhancers. We've been um, shipping progenitor cells we've been doing delivery missions we can even go and scan mega ships all those sort of things are going to get you to your end result which is going to be getting that cirrus permit now some people will rock into a combat zone feeling all combaty and do some combat others will then go on bounty hunting missions to rid a particular sector of a pirate lord um, who's making a nuisance of himself or you can trade your way through it trading your way through it. I think given the fact that um, the Procon system, which is where we're at, and Davy Doc, where we're getting our missions and where we based ourselves with this entire process, is so close to the beginner's section that's been put into the game by Frontier, that perhaps the Cirrus permit is going to be one of the first permits you're going to get. Now, people are always going to want to go to Earth as well, and we'll do a video on going to Earth at a future time. So here we are, we've, learned, we've uh, landed at Birch Enterprises onto the commodities market and we're going to stock up on some things like advanced medicines. Now advanced medicines, we need this to complete one of our missions where we're going to donate some advanced medicines. We're going to stock up on those enough just to get us through. And I've always learned by taking a few extra. Now if you get interdicted in space and someone has a go at your, your cargo hatch, what are you going to do? You've got to go all the way back then and pick up some additional items. Whereas if you get shot and it starts spewing some, some cargo into space, effectively, what if you've got a bit extra, then you might be all right. So always get about 5% extra, just on the off chance. We're going to buy some basic medicines because uh, the Procon system, where Davy Doc is situated, is in a state of outbreak. Now, outbreak means they're going to want advanced medicines. They're going to want basic medicines. They're going to want progenitor styles. They're going to want, you know, performance enhancers. And all these are being sold at the high tech areas. Now, as you'll notice, they're quite an abundant at this one particular station. However, some stations, they're more than likely not going to be. And the closer you are, the less in abundance they are to that one particular outbreak system. You might get a good full cargo load the first time but then the second time you might find yourself a little bit lacking so we're going to take what we can on the progenitor cells um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to take a do a quick assessment we've got a full cargo capacity of 172 tons we can see there's a supply of only 16 tons remaining on progenitor cells so we're gonna have to find somewhere else to go and get those now fortunately close to Davy Dock and the Procon system where we're doing the Cirrus permit missions there's quite a few high-tech stations and systems around and that's great for a number of reasons reason number one yes you can go and get your stuff for your missions progenitor cells basic medicines advanced medicines all that good sort of stuff and stuff that you generally find at high-tech systems. Second good thing is, is that as you progress through these missions, you're making money, right? And making money is what it's all about in Elite Dangerous. And then once you make enough money, you can upgrade your ship or buy a new ship. Let's face it, now I'm rocking around in the Python. Now, these ships are getting more and more achievable earlier on in the game, what with the Void Opal mining aspect. You can get a mediocre ship, even a rock around in a cobra to be fair to go mining um mine some void opals do a couple of those journeys shouldn't take you more than a couple of hours and next thing you know you are swimming in credits and enough credits to get yourself a bit of a beefier ship now before the crate mark 2 was introduced the python always was the quintessential multi-role ship 
to go and get. Some people are now on the fence thinking that, well, you know, that crate, the crate might do it. And then you've got the crate phantom. But let's cut right the way through it. I like using the python. Uh, I like the retro look of the crate. But for this situation, I'm using the python. That discussion's for another video. Crate or python, I don't know. But that's a very good idea. And perhaps we'll cover that in a future video. So, continuing on with our mission. We're, trying to, we're now being um, interdicted by someone who's after all our cargo and it's no surprise there really i mean we're rocking around with millions in cargo so some cheeky monkey's gonna try and take it off us but if you've got a good flight stick and you know what you're doing evading interdiction is going to be quite simple um and then that's going to drop your opponent into normal space whereas you carry on your merry way effectively you can avoid this um by turning all non-essential equipment off now when i say non-essential equipment i'm talking like scanners or sun scanners um you know the pulse wave scanner anything that you think i can turn off to lower your heat signature is going to make you less detectable by any unfriendly contacts you've got in system now i'm heading over to wind dock that's another dock in the same sort of like area i'm going to see what sort of stock they've got on you know progenitor cells and performance enhancers there because I'm in the market to buy quite a load to get this particular permit. Now, as I'm going towards that station, what I'm doing, I'm scanning all the ships because effectively what you're going to be able to do there is you're going to be able to pick up um, additional data and the additional data is going to be great when you start doing some engineering. So there I go. I'm off towards the station. Coming into land now. Good old pad 35. Setting the python down. And we're here. Now, what have we got? Well, first off, first order of business, you've got to have a look and see what commodities are there to be bought. We can do some deliveries as well and get rid of some of that. And this, again, is gaining its reputation. Three points of reputation there. Only 10,000 credits and one of influence. But that three points of reputation is going to be key into raising our rank. And now with the Cirrus Corporation, you can see we are friendly. Now, I'm not really interested in any of the missions from this particular station. I've got enough on my plate going back and forth to Davy Dock and servicing every whim and needs of the Cirrus Corporation. So, off to my next mission. A few hops away. Let's get on over there. Now, this Cirrus Corporation permit, as you probably worked out by now, is a bit of a grind. And when I say a bit of a grind, it's a lot of a grind. But if you want to get in there, you want to get to Hutton, um, all for the mug, and be a Hutton trucker, then this is a necessary evil. And that's a bit of a pilgrimage as well, really. Get Matthew's City. It's coming up on the screen. We're going to get in there. You know, there's no dramas in getting there, really. It's just quite a laborious, long old, drawn out task. Just flying there. It's 62,000 light seconds away. You're in for the long haul, let's face it. And while you're flying around to all these different stations, it gives you time to reflect, I suppose, really, on what the hell it is you're actually doing. Why do you need a Cirrus permit? Why do you want to go on a pilgrimage to Hutton Orbital? Nothing particularly there apart from a bunch of mugs, a couple of things to scan. Take you about an hour, 45 minutes to get there in, in Super Cruise. What's so special about it? And I think an awful lot of people just want to get there. And of course, it's also a precursor to Marco Quent, which is an, uh, an engineer that you'll need to unlock by going through the engineer unlock tree. Now I'm delivering more items here. Again, influence. Well, I'm not particularly interested in that. I mean, two reputation, three influence. It's not going to hurt really, is it? I mean, um, I'll get 314,000 credits and two reputation and two influence there. Well, might as well go for that one, isn't it, really? Because I'm not really fussed on influence. Keep your three pips of influence. I'll go to 314,000 credits. Thank you very much. And this is where it's all about. So you've got to pick the rewards for the missions that you're doing. And as a result of this, right, you could come away with not gaining as much reputation as you wanted because you've misclicked. 
So let's head on off back to our next mission where we're going to go and drop some more items off. We're going to leave Matthew City behind us and get on with the rest of our lives. Now, despite this entire process, like I say, being a bit of a grind, I'm quite enjoying it. It's nice to get back in touch with the trading dynamic, especially now it's changed what with um, the new enhanced trading interface that has been released with the April 2019 update of Elite Dangerous. Now, those of us who are watching this after the effect and are new players and have no idea what the old interface was, this new interface typically does give you an awful lot of intuition in regards to where to buy stuff, where to sell it, where it's good to sell it, where you're going to get the most price. And I think that is key, really. Um, and it's certainly helping a hell of a lot on on this particular mission. Now here I am back at Davy Dock, and this was the system, the agricultural system, um, agricultural station that I picked to do all my serious permit missions. There's a lot of missions here, a lot of good missions, um, a lot of serious corporation missions that I think you're not generally going to get elsewhere. And it's in Outbreak, so you know if you want to make a little bit of scratch on the side that you can rock up with advanced medicines and they're going to rip your arm off. You can rock up with progenitor cells and they're going to rip your arm off. You're going to make some money and you're going to be there laughing all the way to the bank or to the Imperial Cutter Shop. The ability you see here, you know, deliver fruit and vegetables, that's something I've got to go and do. Um, outbreak aid and I need six tons of this, I need six tons of that, we're going to deliver, we're going to empty the cargo hold as much as we can and gain as much reputation as we can as we start delivering these things back to Davy Dock. Now here we go, so influence again is three, reputation is two, so I might as well go, I don't want limpets, do I? But again, 352,000 credits and two reputation and two influence, now why would you not do that? Um, again, a very key thing and it's starting to creep up slowly now into the friendly area. The friendly, the friendly access of this. You know, we've got some of these missions here, 501 tons of progenitor cells. Well, that's going to be a right chore to do, and I think I'm probably going to get there without doing it. We're going to go for the three points of reputation here and 10,000 credits, because like we've said in previous videos, earning the credits during this process is an added bonus, but it's not important to me. We're going to deliver now some basic medicines. There you go. Complete that. Again, what have we got in regards to reputation? Not much in reputation there, really. So we might as well go for some conductive components that have got some rarity there as well, because it's just one pip of reputation. Again, I'm not bothered with influence. There you go, it's creeping up slowly. Performance enhancers, we're gonna donate 42 tons of those. Great. Because we know we can get hold of those. And that should be a pretty quick win. Right, okay, moving on. Doing some donation missions as well to get our reputation up there. We're still nowhere near um, the ability to acquire that one particular permit. So what's this? Here we go, deliver 12 units of fruit and veg. Brilliant. Well, we've got all of those. Let's deliver some more items here, at least in part. No more left in the cargo hold. Deliver four tons of those. Right, time to get back out into the galaxy and stock up. We're going to deliver some more basic medicines, complete that. Again, go for reputation. And you can see how doing these smaller missions, missions that you don't think are going to cander too much money, are actually paying for themselves in reputation. And this, I think, is key. So, on to our next mission. So I'm now on approach to a station called Franklin Ring. Franklin Ring is in the general area of the Procon system. So here we go. We're going to get in there. We're going to land. 
Again, groomed bridge. Spent an awful lot of time in this system doing some work. So I should have pretty good reputation and influence here as well. Now, one good thing about starting off again with the Reboot and Restart series, or, or any new account, whether you think, oh, I'll just fancy playing this on the Xbox, or fancy playing it on the PlayStation, as opposed to the PC, is that you have that benefit of hindsight. What to trade where and when. Now, those of us who have played the old computer game will think, right, I'm going to go between Lave and Ridequat, and I'm going to start trading this. And that's great, and that's all well and good. But there People tend to have their favourite systems and their favourite trade routes. This can be, I think, a little bit limiting as well, though, really. Um, I tend to not home myself on any one particular system. I don't have these home systems that a lot of people do have. I tend to just get on with things. As you can see, I'm now going for the three pips of reputation there. Ooh, we're friendly. Look at that. We're not too far away from Allied. It's not going to be too long before we go and get that now. And as a result of not being homed, I tend to sort of build my reputation and influence up with a lot of systems where I go and, and tend to trade wherever things, wherever things take me. I'm not sure if that's a good way of doing things. I don't know. Put something in the comments if you, if you think it is. I mean, it's not really not too difficult, I think, that when you're flying around as well to make the most use as well of the external camera and revel at the awe that is Elite Dangerous and, and the great graphics that are abound within the game. And I think a lot of people take these for granted as well. And when you're doing these sort of missions, I think you really do get an aspect of what the devs wanted the game to be. I mean, there was, you know, trading, combat and exploration. Okay, originally. Now there's player factions and wing missions and bases and planets you can land on. There's a full smorgasbord of things that you can actually go and do. And so far, there's not another game, I think, that has candid my interest out there like this. Yes, I play an awful lot of Subnautica and I like it, I really do. And they are Billions and Battlestar Galactica and all the other games that I've got on my channel. But I always keep coming back to Elite Dangerous and as a result of which you know I do feel like I'm an, av an avid supporter of the game and its dynamics and when it changes I think people get very um, animated about this especially this latest thing about people cheating people cheating in the game with these applications can't be hard with that what's the point I mean are you that rubbish at a game that you have to cheat I mean, come on, the whole idea of this game is it's you out in the galaxy by yourself or your mates in a wing. If that's not enough help, what the hell do you need? I mean, I come from an era of video games where you had three lives and that was it. If you were lucky. Um, remember Pac-Man? Well, you gain a few extra lives there as you progress through it. But that was it. And when you got that free life, it was like the second coming. With this, you've got a rebuy with credits. As long as you don't run out of money, you're not going to find yourself in a sidewinder. Go mining, play your cards right, buy ships and scatter them around the galaxy. You're never going to find yourself back in a sidewinder unless something catastrophic happens. So why you need to cheat for player v player, I don't know. People boosting shields and people boosting their weapons ranges. If the engineering stuff wasn't enough. It does make me wonder, it really does, on what people's thoughts about these games are. I mean, there's no prizes to be had. You just turn out to be a bit of a git, to be perfectly honest with you. You rock up in the middle, you've got this supercharged ship from all these um, applications that you've used to, to embellish it with additional modifications. And these poor people rock in and end up having a rebuy screen. It's not fair. Um, and hopefully Frontier Development are going to really stamp down on this. I mean, look at this collector mission I'm doing. Collector outbreak samples as well. I've got limpets installed on the ship like I've had in the previous videos. They're going off doing all the hard work for me. And there's any other swag or, you know, cargo out there to be had. I'm just going to go and collect those as well. All is extra money. Why do you need to cheat? Progress through the game. Learn the game. You've paid money for the game. 
play it as the devs intended. Go through the grind. Don't moan about it. It's the game. That's what you signed up for. You know, let's not all be a bunch of snowflakes and just get on with things. That's what I think anyway. So the commercial outbreak sample salvage contract has been updated. I can go back and drop those off. I can get back to another system. Go to that system, jump to that system, do that mission. And what's this mission? Very good. Yeah, we'll get ourselves over there and get that completed. So here we are in the Dumata system. We've turned up. No one's attacked us so far, but we're not carrying a hell of a lot of cargo. That is going to be worthwhile to people. We've done an outbreak samples mission. We've done quite a few missions. And uh, now it's time to go and deliver all that cargo over to Wang City. So here we are on Wang City. Starport services. Bit of refueling into the commodities market. And let's see what we can do with the Cirrus Corporation here. Okay, outbreak data transportation. Complete mission. Thank you very much. We want reputation. Two points there. Click on that. Thank you. Where are we in the reputation stakes? We are allied, everybody. We're allied. That's absolutely great. I think once we finish the next couple of missions we've got going on here, that will be it, and we'll have our Cirrus permit. Now, one thing I think is absolutely great when you're waiting around inside stations as well is to scan all those ships for that additional data. Seeing what's going on. Someone might be wanted inside that station and go charging your lasers off in that station though because you'll find yourself on the wrong outside of the law and in the clink yourself i'm heading back to davy dock now i'm allied i've got a, quite a few things i need to drop off there and as a result of which i think i'm going to gain access to my cirrus permit and as a result of that that will be this mission over but i've enjoyed it i've got there i've done what i've had to do I've delivered outbreak samples, I've donated progenitor cells, I've gone and sourced medicines, I've gone and sourced basic medicines, advanced medicines, performance enhancers. Let's clear my finds because I hit something on the way out. I don't want that um, degrading what I'm going to be doing. Going to the mission board now. Complete my mission. We want reputation, so we're going to have to go basically for that. Have I got enough now to get my permit? That is the question. We are allied. Are we allied enough? I really don't know. Okay, let's move on. Let's scroll down a bit. We've got other missions going on. There's an assassination mission going on. We've got some follow-on missions. We've got outbreak transportation, deliver units of grain. A lot of money for that. Three units of grain, 1.5 million. And that's because you're allied with that particular party, the Cirrus Corporation. That's a lot of money for three tons, especially on a ship like this. But you know people are going to be sent against you and you're going to get a hell of a lot of reputation. One, two, three, four, five pips of reputation there. Okay, well... Am I going to have enough once I deliver some of these items here and clear my cargo hold to get my permit? Because if I have, I can effectively turn around and knock this on the head then and say, right, great, brilliant, fantastic. I've achieved what I wanted to and I've got my Cirrus permit and effectively about three hours, four hours of gameplay. And that can't be too bad. And as you can see in my inventory, I've got all sorts, algae, progenitor cells, 
performance enhancers. Uh, let's get some delivery done. We've got enough to deliver there. Bang, 73 items delivered. Deliver those items, complete that mission. Let's go for reputation right at the end. Look at all those marks there at the end. Bang, and half a million credits as well to go. That's gonna get us well into the Allied Zone. We have now got enough reputation to get the Cirrus permit for the Cirrus system. And it's taken three hours. There you go, I've got my permit. Thank you very much, I'm gonna accept. Once I've accepted, that's it. I now have a permit. I can now travel to my heart's content into the Cirrus system. And as a result of that, I've achieved my goal for this video series. So, thanks very much for watching. I've been Ricardo, and this has been Elite Dangerous, and my quest of a two-part video how to get the Cirrus permit. This has been part of my Reboot and Restart series, where I go out with hindsight, do some trading, and do all the set pieces that I need to go and complete certain quests within the Elite Dangerous game. Thanks very much for watching and sticking with me if you still are. Like and subscribe to more videos in the series.